What is going on, my lovely members? This is the very first advanced members only guide about Pojav Launcher using sodium. This is called my sodium advanced guide, which is going to teach you how to set up different mods alongside sodium so you can get the best performance out of your device. Now, of course, if you have a decent device, you'll be able to play Minecraft Java Edition, but sodium does help with performance and is a rendering optimization mod for Minecraft. It does work with fabric, of course, so I'm gonna tell you all the mods here and I'm gonna show you all the mods and basically show you how to copy them and everything once you have downloaded them. Now, very important is that you pay attention to this part. Some versions of Minecraft Java Edition require you to use a certain mod inside of this mod pack called indium indium actually tells you that since sodium 0.6 you don't need it anymore but lower versions so anything i think below 1.21 requires indium so that it'll help with rendering the fabric uh, api itself so i'm going to be using the 1.20.1 for the example again today and that's because a lot of people like to gravitate to that version and I'm gonna tell you what mods I'm gonna download. So the Fabric API, the Sodium, Cloth Config API, Irish Shaders, Entity Culling, Ferrite Core, Mod Menu, Lithium, Immediately Fast. Now Fabric Language Kotlin is a bonus because on the most part, you're probably gonna need it for future mods. Yet another config library. You can download the Architecture API. It's not gonna really affect anything. Sodium Extra. Now these two are kind of extras, so Xero's Minimap and Entity Textures, you don't really need those. These are all just basically the mods that are on the main page that are very popular. Modern Fix, you can try to use that. I still, to this day, have never found this to be helpful. And Rhesus Sodium Options, Indium. And the next one on page number two is going to be Dynamic FPS, Collective, More Culling, Memory Leak Fix, and that is about it. You can download other mods if you want to, like the sound physics mod and Lambian lights and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to download those. However, I'm gonna show you that I already have all of these mods downloaded in my downloads folder, as you can see here. I have Indium for 1.20.1, Rhesus Sodium, Sodium Extra, Fabric, Amelie Fast, Lithium, Mod Menu, Ferret Core, Entity Calling, Iris Cloth Config, <laughs> Collective, More Calling, Dynamic FPS, Memory Leak Fix, Sodium Fabric, and the bonus one, which we need for Sodium to work anymore, which I have a video out already for this, is Podium. So Podium is a very important one that you need for only versions of Sodium that say either 0.5.13 or newer. So the funny thing is 1.20 point like two and three and four and five and six, they use a different version of sodium, whereas 1.20.1 uses 0.5.13 of sodium, which blocks us from using sodium, unless we use this mod right here. Thank you to that developer that has produced that. So if you wanna go watch that, you know, basic guide about how to install sodium, then do so. Otherwise you can follow along with me right now. So the next thing we're gonna do is navigate back to Pojav Launcher, click on create new profile create a fabric profile, and I'm gonna select just 1.20.1. Click install. Now the thing you're gonna do next is gonna click on that profile. You're gonna go into the wiki on the top right left hand side, and you're gonna click on the three lines, go to wiki, click the three lines again, go all the way down to going further, click on adding custom Java arguments. Now scroll all the way down until you see desodium check false, and this is only required for 1.20.1. Doesn't need it for 1.21.5 or anything, as of right now at least. If you wanna put it in there, you can, just to be on the safe side, but it's really not necessary. Now click on the pencil icon beside the loader. So right here, click the pencil icon, go down to where it says JVM arguments, paste that in there, click done. Now for custom path. So I'm gonna click on save for a second. We're gonna go into open game directory, click on Pojav launcher. And we're going to create a folder in here called My Mod Packs. If you've already followed one of my guides about the Mod Pack stuff and everything, then you already might have this. However, the reason why we're creating a folder in here is so that we can keep our Mod Packs separate from our regular Minecraft, okay? So click on the three dots, click on New Folder, click on 
my mod packs or just type in my mod packs just like so unless you already have this and then inside that folder create another folder called sodium 1.20.1 or whatever version you're using click back click back again click on the pencil icon go all the way down to custom path click on my mod packs sodium select this folder make sure you click on the java runtime make sure it says internal 21 and click save now click play now this is going to run java minecraft for you to be able to use all the mod folders and everything like that that is necessary for this to continue with the next step now click on quick game go back into pojav launcher and we're going to click on open game directory make sure you only use that feature and don't use zarchiver or anything like that click the three lines go to your device name mine is called poco x7 pro go to your downloads click on sort by not modified newest first by clicking the three dots and what this is doing is just basically allowing you to see the most recent downloads if you have other downloads in your downloads folder and just select all of these okay all you're doing is just selecting all of these files now you can go select all three dots copy to click on the three lines go all the way down to pojav launcher click on my mod packs sodium 1.20.1 and paste them in there make sure you don't forget about the uh, podium mod as well now we're going to click back make sure you also take note that you have internal 21 installed if you don't have internal 21 as an option all you have to do is install the latest version of minecraft so that it'll download the java runtime for 121 so now the other thing you can do obviously is mess around with different resolution scales and stuff like that if you haven't done so this is for the mobile glues version of course and that is about it i have this set to 50 percent i can get away with probably 75 percent with stable performance but i think 50 percent is just fine click on play and wait for it to load and here we go we are loaded into minecraft java edition now one important tip is that this device is a mali gpu device and i am using the angle render i'm pretty sure still and i think i set that up when i did the very first video now i'm going to go to options video settings and you'll see here that we have the options for sodium and all the other stuff here now i like to recommend that you start off with seven render distance depending on your device specs of course you can start off with zero render or two render distance if you want and then go from there and see if it helps and also turn down your shadows all the way down to zero and then you can change that accordingly as well this device i can get away with like 888 i know that for sure like eight render distance eight shadow distance and my simulation distance actually i leave it at 12 on the most part and it works out just fine now a good way to actually determine what your device can actually handle is by setting your max frame rate to unlimited turning off your v-sync and then going from there so click apply so you can set those settings first and then your graphics so i like to turn my graphics to fancy as the default and then my clouds to fast my weather i could do that fast as well my leaves i like to leave them at the default which would be fancy which is this top one right here particles decreased you can turn them off completely if you want smooth lighting you can turn that off completely if your device is like a lower end device your entity distance change that down to like 50 to 75 percent this is just basically when you get closer to an animal you'll see them at like 75 percent from your actual location entity shadows i like to turn this off on the most part because i don't really care about the shadows of entities but if you want your game to look really cool then go ahead and do so because entity shadows especially if you have a big farm of animals and stuff will slow down your device distortion effects you can change this as well if you want this to be like 50 percent, you can it doesn't give a high impact as you can see here it tells you a performance impact of low and your mipmap levels this is a performance mip impact of medium so i set this to two on like lower end devices my higher end devices i can get away with four it's perfectly fine and it actually gives you a little description of what it kind of does now click apply and then you can set up other settings in here as well so like we have our performance settings i don't really touch this too much and more culling you can change like your lod range if you want to if you want it to be higher or lower you can now this tries to set it to like the lowest possible so that you don't see anything um as a closer you know option or whatever and there's different things here for like even leaves culling you can change this to fast block state check surrounding gap there's a whole bunch of different stuff here just google 
what it does and that's up to you now i don't really mess around with this stuff too much because i haven't really found this beneficial for the most part with devices i own the next thing is your animations you could turn off your animations completely if you wanted to now that does help with performance a little bit but really i never really noticed a difference either and same with your particles you can turn them all the way off if you want to your details you can turn your sky off with stars and sun and moon and all that kind of stuff as well uh, your multi-dimensional fog you can turn that on and off if you want to and that basically is a different setting altogether um, you can turn off a whole bunch of other stuff and that's what these other settings are for and all those other mods showing the fps highly recommended to do that at the start just so that you get a little bit of a feel for what your device can handle and then you can turn it off at any time while you're in the game if you want. So let's jump into a game and I'll give you some quick tips about what you could do if your device is handling those render settings that we just set up pretty good. So basically what I mean by that is that if I'm getting like 300 plus FPS, that means that the performance of this device is doing its job. And I have different performance modes on this device. This is just a phone. So it's got different gaming modes and stuff like that. So I can handle usually pretty good performance with this thing, but honestly, getting a gaming handheld like a Odin 2 or an Odin Portal or an Ambernick or whatever, or Retroid Pocket 5 will definitely help you in a lot of cases. So now I'm jumped into a world. I'm in a snow biome and hey, there's a village over there. Let's go all the way over there anyways, right away. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk over here and you can see on the top left-hand side that I'm getting pretty good performance with the way that I've set it up right now, and that's because I know that my device can't can handle this kind of a you know setting. It's kind of funny how the village is like partially in a snow biome, and it's not a snow village. And basically, as you can see on the top left hand side, I am getting like an average of 140 FPS. Now, what if I went like this? If I like cranked up the render distance, this is going to slow down the device a lot. I know that, but I'm going to go to like 16 and see what happens here okay now my averages as you can see it's just slowing down and what do we got we got an average of 90 90 ish fps and it's going back up there so it's starting to level itself out because it's rendering stuff in but honestly that's 16 render distance on a phone that's not really that performant doesn't have active cooling or anything like that and we're able to see all the way out there look at the nice planes those are really nice looking aren't they so what you could basically take note of with this is that you could probably get away with leveling off your or locking off your FPS to 60 FPS and just enjoy playing Minecraft at 16 render distance with 60 FPS. I like it. I don't mind it. Hey, look, I can see everything all the way out there and you don't even need things like distant horizon with this. Now, again, you might want to try to lock it at maybe 90 because your device was getting between... 60 and 120 to begin with so what i mean by that is when we went to unlimited we were able to see that we were getting what were we getting about 110 15 i think something like that now of course this is going to change if you're like flying through the sky and stuff like that as well but honestly this is a pretty good render distance especially when you have a whole bunch of stuff out here but what i mean is that basically i could just set this to like 90 and lock it and it would be okay now, I'm going to show you another thing quick here when I was telling you about the uh, entity distance and stuff like that. So if we go to our entity distance right here, if I change this to 50%, you saw there was a whole bunch of cows down there. The entity distance for the render, so you see how the cows are starting to disappear? That's because that's part of the chunk base that I am in right now. So 50% of the chunk base, when I get closer to that, See how the, the cows start rendering in way, way back there? I know it's kind of hard to see probably unless you're really looking for it, but yeah, the cows are zooming in and they will, you know, basically only show up when I start getting a little bit closer to them. That's the same thing with like any animals in any other location. So there's some pigs right here. So let me, let me go down on the main plains here and basically show you what I mean. So if I start backing up, and we get to the 70 or 50 percent mark those pigs are going to start disappearing and that's like 50 percent of the chunk so there we go there they are they're gone and as soon as i get closer they're showing up so if i change this to 100 percent which does help with the actual um, 
the actual render. As you can see, it's got a high performance change. I'm able to see them while I'm still in the chunk. As you can see here, they're still showing up. Now, obviously, they're going to be really small when you get further back, and you can't really see them anyways, but that's basically what that does, and that's just the gist of how that works. So I wish you could change it to, like, 25%. I don't know if there's like a sneakily way to do this, but honestly, that's about it, guys. I hope you members enjoy that. Again, this is kind of an advanced guide about how to get Sodium working great with your Android phone or gaming handheld. And the reason why I'm doing this for members only is because I figure if you're a member, you're gonna pay attention and you're probably gonna be old enough because you're able to pay for memberships, I'm guessing. I don't know. Maybe you're a kid and you're allowed to and your mommy and daddy let you too. Who knows? But have a nice day, guys. Enjoy playing Minecraft Java Edition on your phone or Android gaming handheld. Obviously, gaming handhelds are going to be a little bit better because they do have more performance modes and you can do so much more with them. And look, we got a whole bunch of stuff around here. Maybe I'll share this level in the description of the video too if you want to play on it.